welcome to our virtual Pilates class. Just like in our regular classes, we're going to focus on engaging the core and strengthening our posture. I want you to focus on engaging your Kegel or the pelvic floor muscles and drawing in those lower abs. So let's go ahead and practice that. So contract the Kegel, the lower abs, and breathe and release. Kegel, lower abs. Sit up nice and tall. I want you to take the crown of your head. So it's not the front of your head. It's the back top, the crown. And reach it up towards the ceiling. Kind of stack your spine, those vertebrae, up as high as you can. Go in as high as you can. Release that core. Keep that tall posture. Engage the cable, the lower abs. Sitting up nice and tall. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, relax your shoulders. Keep that tall posture, keep that tall, the cable and the lower abs engaged. Deep breath in, growing taller, 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 taller. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Let it go. Keep practicing that. Engage the pelvic floor, contract the lower abs, sit up tall. Throughout the class, I'll give you modifications to make it easier or harder, just like I do in class. Remember, the general rule of thumb is if you can maintain your core, maintain your balance, and maintain your posture during a move, then you might be ready to get up a level. If you can't maintain those things, then you need to go down a level and try the easier option. Deep breathing. Nice, tight core. Keep that strong. Roll your shoulders out. Keep breathing. Your shoulders, your upper traps, tensing up like that, that's not part of your core. So that should be loose while the pelvic floor and the, the uh, lower abs are going to be strong. Let's go and tuck your arms. Sitting up tall, nice strong core. Breathing in, blow it out your mouth. In your nose. Roll your shoulders, keep that core engaged. Ear to shoulder, stretching out your neck. Your whole core is nice and strong. Your shoulders are relaxed. Keep breathing. Look straight ahead, roll your shoulders. Keep your core engaged, go to the other side. Keep that nice tall posture, strong core. Relaxed shoulders. Look straight ahead, roll your shoulders out again, double check your core, double check your posture, turn your head to the side, and look down. Staying tall, keeping your core engaged, breathing. Relaxing that neck, letting it sink into this position. Straight ahead, double check your core, double check your posture, turn your head the other way, and look down. Keep breathing, keep your core engaged, hands are relaxed, shoulders are relaxed. When you exhale, letting that head sink a little bit lower, keeping your core on. Breathing, all right, roll it out just a little bit more. I'm gonna turn on some music. All right, add some arm pumps. Keep that core engaged, keep that tall posture. Take your arms to the back. Open up through the chest. Don't let your back arch. Remember your core is drawing in to stabilize your spine. Thinking about that lumbar imprint in the back. The crown of your head reaching for the ceiling. Pelvic floor, lower abs are engaged, nice and strong. Bring your hands to the front, nice strong arm pumps. Tall posture, tight core. Keep breathing. Open those arms up, arm circles, stabilize through the core. Keep the tall posture. Deep breaths. Reverse. Good. 
open and close. Keep that core stabilizing, keep that nice tall posture, the crown of your head reaching for the sky. Breathe. Good. All right, roll it out. We're going around to the mat. So find that pelvic floor. Find those lower abs. Take one leg up. Take your hands. Press your entire arm down into the mat. You should feel that through your hands, through your elbow, even through your shoulder blades. Now check your neck. It shouldn't be all scrunched up. Be nice and long. Let the back of your neck is reaching for the mat. The crown of your head reaching for the opposite wall. Pressing into the arms, tight core. Lower that leg and then take the other leg up. Lower that leg and switch. The whole time you're keeping that kegel, you're keeping those lower abs. Trying to make a lumbar imprint right here in your low back. Pushing the whole arm down, long neck, deep breathing. Really feel that core stabilizing. Keep that peg on, lower abs, sew down to the mat like someone's pulling a needle and thread, sewing your belly button to the mat. Alternating legs. Do one more on each side. Good. Keep that leg there. We're going to lift your head and shoulders. Going to the hundreds of straight arm pumps. Your leg is in tabletop. Your core is engaged. And we're going to alternate legs. Keep that belly button drawing in towards the back. That pelvic floor engaged. If you want, you can keep going at this level. If this is easy for you, you can make it a little bit harder by taking both legs up. Make sure you're breathing, keeping the pelvic floor and the lower abs strong and nice and strong. Your fingertips are reaching for the opposite wall. Your head is reaching long. If you want to make it harder from here, you can go into that Pilates V. Good. Bend one leg in, the other leg goes long. Tap your ankle and switch. Breathing. Last one. Keep that core strong. Grab your knees. Relax your head down. Put your feet on the mat. We're going into bridge. So find your pelvic floor. Find those lower abs. When your lower abs contract, you're going to go into a pelvic tilt and then release. Kegel. Lower abs contract into that pelvic tilt and release. Kegel. Lower abs to pelvic tilt. Release. Keep going. Now check your neck. Did it get all scrunched up? Make your neck nice and long. The crown of your head reaching for the opposite wall. All right. Hold that stable core. Wiggle your legs. Your legs should be relaxed. We don't need our leg muscles to help us stabilize our core. They're separate muscles. Okay. So you've got your kegel. You've got your lower abs. Making that lumbar imprint, checking your neck, making it, trying to make a cervical imprint too. Nice long neck. Your legs are relaxed, your core is engaged. Now you're ready to lift up into a bridge. Keep that kegel engaged all the way as you come down. Don't release until you uncurl. Release, contract, pelvic tilt. Come on up one vertebrae at a time. Check your neck, make sure it's long. Squeeze at the top. Keep that core engaged all the way down. Coming down one vertebrae at a time. 
really articulating the spine. After you uncurl, you can release. Kegel, lower abs, curl up one vertebrae at a time. If you want to push down into your arms, activate those scapulas you can. Keep that core engaged all the way down. Nice long breath. And then just make sure you're breathing. Tighten. Curl up one vertebrae at a time. Push through those arms. Squeeze it at the top. Keep that core engaged as you come down. One vertebrae at a time. Let's do two more. Long neck. Tight pulls through the whole motion. One more. Nice long neck. Strong core, strong arms pushing down into the mat. And then you can release once you're back on the mat. Take one leg up, grab a hold of it with your hand. Flex and point. Flex and point. You're just bending your ankle, trying to get your legs straight. Nice long neck. Your core should be engaged. Roll your ankle. Other direction. Get your neck really long. Put that foot down, switch legs, tight core, lift that leg, flex and point, flex and point. Check your neck, make sure it didn't get scrunched up. Tight core. Roll your ankle. Keep your neck long, keep your core engaged. Reverse. Go ahead and lift your head and shoulders. Float that other leg. Tight core. Switch legs. Give it a good stretch. Really turn on those quad muscles right there above your knee. Trying to straighten the knee. Switch. Stretch it with your hands. Turn that quad on. Make it straight, 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 straight. Switch. Every time, give it a little stretch and activate that quad. Switch. Give it a stretch, activate the quad. Let's do each leg like that again. Good, now we're gonna go faster. Switching legs, keep that core engaged. If your head, if your neck gets tired, you can put your head down. Okay, lifting your head allows you to activate your upper abs and your lower abs. Your one foot's on the table, or on the mat. The other leg is straight. You're going to sweep it up and then down. Your hands are down on the mat. Your neck is long. Your core is strong. So I want you to try to stabilize. Feel the core stabilizing as you're lifting and lowering your leg. Push down into your hands. Push down into your low back with that active core. Double check your neck. Two more. Point that toe at the ceiling. I want you to draw some circles on the ceiling with your toe. Long neck, anchoring through your core, really turning on that quad. Reverse. Good. Take that foot on top of your opposite knee. Figure four bridge. So tight core, press down into your hands. Lift and lower. Remember, trying to come down one vertebrae at a time. Your core is engaged throughout the motion. Pushing into the arms. Nice long neck. Keep checking that pelvic floor, checking those lower abs.
Two more. Good. Put that foot on the floor. We gotta do the other leg. So the other leg's gonna go straight, sweeping it down, sweeping it up. Pressing the hands down. Long neck, tight core. Feel that stability through the core as you're sweeping your leg up and down. Deep breathing. Good. Point that toe towards the ceiling. Turn on the quads. Try to make it as straight as you can. Little circles. Anchor with your core. Long neck, strong arms. This leg that's on the mat should be helping anchor also. Reverse. Take that foot and put it on your opposite knee in a figure four bridge. Engage your core, press up, and then lower down one vertical. Keep that pelvic floor engaged throughout the whole motion. Don't release it until after you've landed and uncurled. Keep breathing, keep that strong core, keep pressing into your arms. Do one more. Good. Bend your knees into your chest. Rock side to side. Give your spine a little massage for a second. Take it into tabletop position. Lift your head and shoulders. We're back to the hundred. The core should be warmed up enough to be able to do the hundred with both legs now. From here, if you're newer to this class, put your hands under your bottom for this move. If you're not new, you can try keeping your hands out. So we're in tabletop. Nice long neck. Your core is engaged. You're going to drop your toe two inches and then bring it back up. And then the other leg gets a turn. Just two or three inches. Now I want you to pay attention to that long neck and that strong core. If your low back starts to pop up or you start to lose your core, then go smaller with your leg motion. If you're feeling very strong, then you can go bigger. You can go all the way down to the mat if you want. But only if you can keep that core fully engaged and not let your low back pop off the mat. So you got to play around with how many inches you can move and still keep control of your core. Okay, if you can go all the way and it's really easy for you, then you can put your hands up to your side and then start with small and go bigger. Okay, back to tabletop. Hands are going to press in on the outsides of your legs, and then they're going to go press out on the inside of your legs. And you're just stabilizing. So the hands press out, pushing inward on the outside of the leg, and the hands press outward on the inside of the legs. You're just resisting. Now check your neck. Make sure your neck is in good alignment. Your hands are going to the outside and going to the inside. And while you're doing that, you're stabilizing through the core. You've got an active lumbar imprint, an active cervical imprint in your neck. Nice good posture. Good. All right, we're going to get a bicycle. So hands at your ears. You can lift. And then reach long, take the elbow to the opposite knee. 
Let's bring her back. Grab behind your knees, tight core, roll up. All right, from here we're going to transition onto our side. So you might want to grab some weights. You don't have to. So on your side, find a little pillow right here on your arm. Stabilize your core so contract those lower abs and that pelvic floor. Try to think about lifting your core up off the mat just a little bit. For more stability, you put your hand on the mat. For less stability, you can put your hand up. If your hand is up and you want to make it harder, you can add a weight. Okay, so this is starting position. Leg raises. If you feel pretty stable here, feel free to take your arm up with or without a weight. Leading with that heel. See how my toe is pointing towards the floor, my heel is pointing towards the ceiling. Isolating out a particular muscle group that we want to focus on. I like to hit that glute medius instead of the hip flexors. It's better for our posture and stability. One more. All right, let that leg float. And then the bottom leg is going to come up and tap it. And tap. And tap. Keep your core engaged. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Keep breathing. Double check that pelvic floor. Good. You can lower your legs down, or if you're feeling really spicy today, you can keep both legs lifted. I'm going to let mine relax. Palm is forward. Lower and lift. Engage your core to stabilize. <clears throat> this is five. We're going to ten on these. Six. Stabilize your core. Keep breathing. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten. When you get up there, double check your core. We're going to do arm circles. So strong arm circles. Stabilize your core. Don't let your body move. Reverse. So go circling in the other direction. Right, now we have leg circles, so your hand can be up, that's harder, or your hand can be down to give you extra stability. Double check your core, top leg's going to lift, give me leg circles, straight knee, tight core. Reverse, we got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, the bottom leg gets a turn. If this top leg is really tired, you can put it down. If not, you can keep it lifted. Bottom leg gets the circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <clears throat> nine, ten. Reverse. Ten, nine, six, five, four, three, two. And one, bend your knees, bring your elbow in, bring your weight down. We've got clamshell. So on clamshells, a lot of times people want to rotate that top hip backwards. We really don't want to do that because I want to isolate out that glute medius. And the only way to do that is to keep that top hip forward. So look at your knees. That top knee should be more forward than your bottom knee. Engage your core, open, and then close. When you close, double check that knee. Make sure it didn't slide back. <clears throat> you can put your hand on your hip to try to catch yourself if you go, whoa, like leaning back, okay? You can use your eyes to catch you too. Sometimes we're really sneaky with that compensatory motion. 
Keep your core engaged. Let's do three more. Two. And one. Little pulses at the top. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So you got rotator cuff, so relax your leg. We'll come back to it. Glue your elbow to your side. Bring your hand up. Now what I see a lot of times is people coming up here. Nope, nope, nope. Keep your elbow glued to your side the whole time. We're trying to isolate out that rotator cuff. So glue your elbow down. Don't let the elbow come off of your body. The other thing you can think about is check and see, is it just your upper arm that's doing it? Or is your shoulder blade or your scapula squeezing toward your spine? And we really want that scapula to squeeze toward your spine. So it should be targeting the muscles that attach to the arm and to the scapula. One more. Good. Little pulses. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. You can put your weight down. You're going to tap your knee to the floor in front and then tap your toe to the floor behind you. So tap your knee to the floor in front and then tap your toe to the floor behind you. Keep your pelvic floor and your lower abs engaged. My hand is stabilizing me into the floor. You don't have to. You can just hold that arm up. Let's do five more. Knee and then the toe. Four more. Check your pelvic floor. Check your lower abs. Three more. Make sure you're breathing. Your neck and shoulders are relaxed. One more. Good. All right. Go ahead and put your weight down. We kind of even you guys out. We're going to flip over to the other side. Grab your weight if you were using one. Remember, you might be stronger on one side than the other, so it may be easier on one leg, harder on the other, and that's okay. We often are. All right, so your legs are out straight, your head is resting on your arm. Remember, your hand can be down for extra stability. So let's start like that. Toe is pointing towards the floor, heel is pointing up. If that feels pretty easy and you're engaging your core, then you can always take your arm up to the ceiling. Feel free to add a weight if you want. Keep your core engaged. Do three more. Two. And one. That top leg is just going to float. Tighten your core. Come up and tap it with your other foot. For ten. Nine. Eight. Check your pelvic floor. Seven. Shoulders are relaxed. Six. Make sure you're breathing. Five. Four. Three. Two, and one. You can either keep your legs up or you can just let them take a little bit of a break. Palm is facing forward. Your arm gets a turn. Lower and lift. Keep your core engaged. Keep your shoulders and your neck relaxed. Keep breathing. we got five more. Four. Three, two, and one. Stabilize your core. We have arm circles. So straight arm, strong circle. Stabilize. Reverse. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one. You can keep that leg, the arm lifted or you can put it down, okay, just depending what you need for stability. Leg circle. So top leg, tight core, circle. One, two, three, 
four, five. Stabilize your body. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Either keep that leg lifted, or if it's really tired, you can put it down back here, okay? All right, bottom leg gets the circle. Tight core. Shoulders are relaxed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Relax those legs. Bring them in. You can put your weight down. Clamshells. Okay, so remember on clamshell, that top hip needs to stay forward. So look at your knees. Make sure that top knee is forward. You can put your hand on top of your hip to help. Okay, so core is engaged. Open and close those knees. See, my heels are staying together. Sometimes I see people come all the way up here. My heels are staying together. Okay, really just trying to isolate out that glute knees. Strong core. Check your knee every time. Give me five more. Four, three, two, and one. Hold it up. Pulse it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax that leg. Grab your weight. Super glue your elbow to your side. Open and close. Remember, I don't want to see any elbows coming up off your body. Keep it down against your side. Okay, you're just opening that hand up and down, up towards the ceiling and down. Stabilize your core, so feel that stability, feel that core being really strong. Let's do four more. Three. And two. And one. Hold it right here. Little pulses. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. You can put your hand on the floor. We've got that knee tap. Toe tap. Knee tap. Toe tap. If you don't need that stability for your arm, you can always put your hand up in the air. Check your pelvic floor, check your lower abs, make sure they're nice and strong. Shoulders are relaxed. Neck is relaxed. Let's do five more. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Good. Okay, changing positions. If you need to grab a drink of water, you can. Ready to go on hands and knees. If you need a knee pad, you could, or a wrist pad, you could double up your mat or put another yoga mat or get one of those little pads that we have in class. Alright, we're on hands and knees. So the main thing about hands and knees is you really don't want to be like saggy through your through your hips or through your shoulders, and you also don't want to be all arched up. Okay, so you want to find a neutral pelvic position where you can lock your core in and also through the shoulder blades. So nice and flat and straight with good posture. Okay, first we're going to do bird dog. There's lots of variations that you can do for bird dog, and you need to pay close attention to those three things I mentioned. So looking at your core engagement, looking at your balance, and your posture. So take one arm up to the front and take the opposite leg to the front. So level one would be, can you even just hold this position? Okay, so that's level one. If you can hold that position, stay there. If you're ready to make it harder, feel free to add a weight or not. And we're just going to lift and lower that arm. Okay, so tight core, good balance, and good alignment. Okay, look at yourself in the mirror and make sure you're nice and lined up through your shoulders and neutral through your pelvis. Don't let your head drop. Sometimes I see this as we get tired. So keep that nice good alignment. 
If just moving the arm feels pretty easy to you for your balance and your alignment and your core, feel free to add that leg lift. Got to keep that core engaged. Sometimes what I see here is that people will arch their back. That tells me you're not stabilizing your core. So I shouldn't really see any movement other than just in your own leg. If you're losing your balance, okay, or you can't hold that good posture, then you need to go down a level. So just go back to just the arm. All right, from here, we're going to go out to the side. Okay, so raise that arm up. The foot is down. The arm only is going out to the side and then reaching long. Out to the side and then reaching long. So this might throw your balance off a little bit. You have to use your obliques to stabilize. It's a different plane of motion. So just the arm. Check your posture. Okay, check your alignment and your hips and your shoulders. Check your spine. Make sure your core is engaged. If that's pretty easy, you can try lifting your leg. Still moving that arm, but not the leg. And then if you want to add on, you can add that leg. Reaching out to the side, opposite of the arm. This is the harder level. Make sure you're maintaining that alignment for the spine. Strong core, good balance. If you can't maintain all of those things, then you need to put the leg back down or stop moving it. All right, let's switch sides. So switch legs, switch arms. Remember, you can start off with no weight. Just take that foot behind you, take that arm out in front of you. See if you can hold that position. See if you can do arm raises by themselves. If you need to add on, then you can add a weight. Just raising the arm. Check your hips, check your spine, check your shoulders. So that core is strong. If you want to try adding a leg lift, you can. Okay, holding the leg up in place is easier than moving. Okay, so that up and down motion is harder. You could just be up and down with the arm and holding the leg. Okay, so there's lots of options to make this one harder or easier. Now, double check that you're not doing this. I don't want to see any sway back, right? Keep that core engaged. Only thing moving is the arm and the leg. If that. All right, from here, going out to the side. So let's try the foot down, arm to the side, arm long. Double check your core, check your alignment. If you can keep that core in that alignment, keeping good balance, you can try it with your leg lifted. If you're feeling okay with that and you want to add on, you can try reaching that leg out to the opposite side. Three more. Keep that core engaged. Check your head. Make sure your head isn't dropping. Good. Set back. Roll your wrist out. Going to fire hydrant next. So you're back on your hands and knees. Double check your alignment. You're not sagging. You're not up tall. You're nice and neutral. Fire hydrant. Stabilize the core. Don't let me see it arch when you move. Out to the side. Okay, take that knee out to the side. Try to keep your hips facing the mat. Your hips are going to want to turn and open all the way up, but it's really not about getting that twist in the middle. It's about isolating out the, um, that gluteus again. Okay, lots of similarities with this and clamshell, but we're activating through the scapulas more. This time it's a little more dynamic. All right, let's switch sides. Tight core. Realign your, your spine. And put out to the side.
Tall. You really need to check your position in the mirror with this one. Tuck your tail. Tight core. I want you to check that your ears are over your shoulders, which are over your hips, which are over your knees. Our bodies have a tendency to want to be here and here. Okay, so really check and make sure your hips have gotten forward over your knees, shoulders over your hips, and your ears are over your shoulders. Tighten your core to engage and hold this position. Arm hooks. Breathe. Every time you inhale, try to grow your spine up taller. Getting taller all along the entire spine, especially up in your neck area. Double check that pelvic floor. Pull those lower abs in. Look in the mirror. Make sure you keep your alignment. Your ears are on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips, on top of your knees. As we move, sometimes you lose that. All right, palms facing, open up your chest. Now when you do this one, keep that core drawn in. I don't want to see your back arching. Keep that core drawn in. Activating the scapulas. Feeling the muscles burn between your shoulder blades. Double check the crown of your head should be reaching for the ceiling. Pelvic floor is engaged. You're breathing. Nice, strong arm pumps. Good. Bring those pumps to the front. Right here. Don't sit back. Okay, keep your hips tucked. Nice and tall. Check your alignment. Good. All right, that gave your wrists a break. Let's give your knees a break for a second. So tuck your toes under, engage your core, press your shoulders away from your ears, and just float your knees for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. We're going on to our elbows. We've got a little bit more hip work here. Down onto your elbows. Slide your knees back just a little bit. Push those elbows. So you could have a tendency to shrink through your shoulders. Push those elbows down into the mat. Pull your spine away from that. Tight core. One leg is long. Lift and lower. And notice I'm not arching my back when I lift and lower. I'm stabilizing my core. The only thing moving is my leg. You may have a tendency to open up that hip. Like I might want to open it up towards the screen, but don't keep it facing the floor. Keep pressing those elbows down. Check your pelvic floor, check your lower abs. Make sure they're drawing in. There's no sway back. Check your head. Make sure your head hasn't sunk down. Nice long posture. Give me four more. Three, two. And then take that leg out to the side and long. 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 Five more. Four. Three. Two. And one. So switch leg. Push those elbows down. Check your alignment. Lift and lower. Double check your pelvic floor. Your lower abs are pulling in. Your hips are facing the mat. Shoulders are pulling away from your ears. We got five more. Keep that core engaged. Four. Keep your head neutral. Three. Two. Double check that pelvic floor again. One. Take it out to the side for ten. Nine. This is the last one in this position. Seven, keep that core engaged. Six, keep pushing those elbows down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your knees in. Come on up, roll it out. We're going on our backs one more time, and then we'll stretch and we're done. 
So you need your weights. We're going to start off on our backs. We'll do serratus press, and then we'll do some other movements and bridging. Tight core as you lower down one vertebrae at a time. Engage that pelvic floor. Find that lumbar imprint. Double check your neck nice and long. From here, your arms are up straight. We're doing a serratus press. So remember, you just lift your shoulder blade off the mat and then the other shoulder blade off the mat. You keep your elbows straight the whole time. There's nothing else moving. It's just your scapula or your shoulder blade coming off the mat and then back on the mat. Very important muscle group for shoulder integrity. Double check your core. You should be anchoring through the core. Nice long neck. Two more on each side. Good. From here, double check your core. Come on up into a bridge. Palms are facing each other. You're going to open and close. Open and close. Open and close. Here's four. We're going for ten. Five. Keep that pelvic floor engaged. Lower up or draw in. Six. Nice long neck. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Right here. Hold that bridge. Arm circles. Make those arms strong so you're having to fight that movement through your core. Reverse. Nice, strong core, long neck. Make sure you're breathing. Good, lower down. Float one leg, make it long. Your other, your arms reach long, tight core. Tap from right here. Check your core, check your neck. Make sure it's not shrugged up. Make it long. Reach long, tight core, tap. Reach long, double check your core throughout the motion. Double check your neck. Make sure you're breathing. Sew that belly button to the mat. Give me five more. Switch legs so the other leg comes up. Double check your core, double check your neck. Reach long and tap. Reach long and tap. We got eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. back down. You're going to lift your bottom up into a bridge. Your arms are up to the ceiling. When you lower your bottom down, you're going to lower your hands down, bending your elbows. So your hands or your weights will touch the mat and your bottom will touch the mat. Tighten your core, lift your bottom, lift your weights. Keep that core engaged and slowly, slowly, slowly lower the weights down, lower the bottom down. Tight core, push up. Nice and slow. Tight core, push up. Nice and slow on the way down. Double check your neck. It should still be long. Keep that, just like we do on any regular bridge, you want to keep that pelvic floor and then lower abs engage all the way until you can. Good. All right, take your knees up to tabletop. From tabletop, we're going to open and close. Open and close those arms. 
Try to get your legs at tabletop. Check in the mirror. See if they're at 90, 90. So 90 degrees with the hips, 90 degrees with the knees. Your neck long, core engaged. One more. Good. All right, you can put your weight down. Take one foot up, put it on your opposite knee. Bring them in, give it a hug. Figure four stretch. Rock side to side. This is the same stretch that we do when we're standing. We kind of pretend like we're sitting in a chair. You can also do this stretch sitting in a chair. It's a great stretch for the back of your hips. Rocking side to side. If you find a sweet spot where you really need a good stretch, you can stay there and rock in that little spot. All right, switch legs. So the other foot goes on top of your knee. Give it a hug. Rock it side to side. Like I say, if you find a sweet spot where you really want a good stretch, you can just rock it right there. Your neck long. Keep your core engaged. And cross. Grab behind your knees. Engage your core. Rock up. Legs are out. Nice and tall. Reach your crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Pinch forward at your hips. Pull your toes back towards your body, engaging your quads. Hinge at the hips, but not the spine. Okay, keep your spine tall. Reaching forward, feel that stretch at the backs of your legs. Nice and tall, the crown of your head is still reaching for the ceiling. Your spine is straight. Remember, you're just bending through the hips. Your legs are straight, the quads are on. Take a couple of breaths, grow taller when you inhale. Reach further when you exhale. Grow tall when you inhale. Reach forward as you exhale. One more. Good. Come up onto your knees. Double check in the mirror. You've got your hips over your knees. Shoulders over your hips. Your head is not forward. Those ears are stacked right on top. Keep that posture, keep your core engaged, stretch out your triceps. Remember, don't let your head fall forward when you stretch your triceps. Sometimes we lose the posture. So keep that core engaged, don't let your hips fall back, don't let your head fall forward. Switch arms, checking that alignment, engaging that core. Keep your breathing, nice deep breaths, we're almost finished. your shoulders out. Keep that posture. Keep the core. Clasp your hands forward and then take them to the side. Little circle. Reverse direction. Take your hands to the other side. Little circles. Reverse through circle. Good. Roll your shoulders out. Come on up and grab a hold of the wall if you need to for balance. Tuck your tail. Pull that leg behind you. Nice good stretch. Holding the wall if you need it. If you're able to let go for a second to work on your balance while you stretch, you can. If you want to make it harder, you can do so. Other side. Tight core. That leg. Find a focal point for your balance if you need to. Remember, hold on if you need to. Once you get in that position, you can try to let go for a second and work on your balance. Reach up if you want. It's harder. Bring that leg down. Give me a deep breath in. Blow it out. One more good breath in. Blow out all your tension. Yay. All right. Have a good week. I have no idea.